Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Different impression materials require different designs of trays, as do the different procedures uh, which we are doing. With the vinyl polysiloxane materials, uh, we would like to have a customized tray so that we can maintain a uniform thickness of the material, uh, which contributes greatly to the accuracy of the impression uh, material. Here we're making a tray for an anterior bridge, so obviously we would like to capture the soft tissue in the area of the bridge and also a good portion of the dentition on the opposite side so that we can uh, give this to our technician and he can develop something that will be uh, quite aesthetic. After you have become uh, more proficient at taking impressions, you can cut the flange on your tray slightly sh shorter. Uh, however, to make sure that we capture all of the hard tissue, and this is basically what we're interested in, the posterior portion of uh, the mouth in this case, we will extend the tray uh, several millimeters beyond uh, the uh, coronal portion of the tooth. So the first uh, step will be to obtain a, uh, a good impression, and then mark where you'd like the peripheral portion of your tray to be, and pick a, a portion uh, that you can index to. Usually, if the two central incisors are available, uh, mark a line here. And this would be carried around to the other side. And then there's uh, no, no necessity of uh, covering the palate, since we're not interested in that portion of the soft tissue. And it just uh, makes it uh, considerably more difficult to remove uh, the tray after the material has set. We'll also pick three areas for stops and on this particular demonstration we picked uh, a molar and uh, the one central tooth and then uh, a molar over here and the first step will be to take some base plate wax and adapt it to our cast and try to adapt it so that it uh, comes approximately where we would like to have the, the tray extend. One thing that uh, we want to bear in mind, on the cuspid, we have three pins that will be projecting from our preparation, so it's necessary to leave some additional room in this area, so we'll put uh, several thicknesses of wax in the lingual area of the cuspid so that they uh, the pins do not uh, hit the tray and uh, prevent us from seating it properly. We'll also cut these little square stops for our tray uh, prior to putting on our acrylic. And then our next step will be to take some uh, regular aluminum foil and adapt this well over the wax that we have adapted and uh, I've cut it so that it extends uh, just beyond where the margin of the wax is, so that I have oh, approximately three millimeters beyond that, so that I know about where I would like my acrylic to extend to. This uh, helps me uh, with my end product because I know I've got my tray extended sufficiently, and uh, also it uh, means that I don't have to uh, do an inordinate amount of, of trimming. I have made a tray here, and I'll show you some of the, the objectives uh, that we would like to accomplish. Uh, first, as we discussed, we would like to have some centric stops uh, on the two molars and uh, on the central tooth. And then this tray has uh, some features which uh, are a little out of the uh, possible ordinary 
in tray design. As you'll notice, there's a flange that runs the complete peripheral area of the tray here. And also on the paddle area, this flange has been extended. And the rationale for this is it allows us to have a, a finger grip in all areas of the mouth. And normally when we remove a tray, we will reach up in the posterior and remove this area first, or at least break it loose so that we break the uh, adherent uh, suction and uh, adhesion to the, the tooth structure uh, with the tray. So we, we'll break the tray loose back in the posterior and then go up to the anterior and try to remove it in a straight line uh, parallel to the long axis of the tooth. So this does enable us to grasp the tray in any particular area. Plus the fact with uh, this ribbing effect, it gives more stability to the tray. A couple other features that might be noted is our, our centric stop here, and I'll put the tray in place on the cast. And I have uh, sectioned this and painted it so that it would be a little more uh, discernible. Uh, you can see that we have a positive centric stop on the molar uh, to keep the tray from uh, burning through the occlusal surface. Uh, also one in the, in the anterior and over on the other side. Uh, another feature you'll notice that we brought the, the tray down and formed a dam on the posterior of this tooth. This is not particularly critical in, in this particular instance since the uh, bridge is in the anterior part of the mouth, but if this had been a uh, posterior bridge and this had been our terminal abutment, Many times, unless you've carried this skirt of the tray down, uh, the material has a tendency to squirt out behind the tray, and it's difficult to capture this marginal area. However, if the tray is extended down, it forces the material against the tooth, and uh, the chances of getting this posterior margin are, are greatly enhanced. You'll also note that we've, we've sloped the tray down in this area so that it doesn't impinge on the the soft tissue uh, in this area and uh, it's much more comfortable on the patient. And here you can see the, the sectional area showing uh, the flange uh, quite uh, well. Uh, that enables you to, to grasp the tray and, uh, and extract it without uh, a great deal of difficulty. So uh, let's uh, uh, make up a tray uh, and we won't uh, take the time to completely finish it as I have done with this one. One other thing I might call to your attention is the fact that we have run the border that's going to be in contact with the soft tissue. Uh, we've gone over it with uh, some pumice to smooth it up because if this is left rough, uh, recall that the patient isn't completely anesthetized uh, all around the arch and if um, you put a uh, a hard, sharp uh, material such as this tray material is in contact with the soft tissue. It's going to be extremely uncomfortable on the patient. Also, your tray wants to be to be smooth and clean and presentable because it's going into the patient's mouth, and the patient is forming an impression of you just by uh, the type of materials you use and and your conduct uh, and and interaction with them. We've also put a mark on the front of the tray, which indexes with the, the mark that we put on the cast so that we can uh, more easily position the tray and, uh, and make sure that the stops are in uh, proper relation to the, the dentition. Uh, these are, are basically the, the tenets of, uh, of designing a tray for this uh, type of impression. We've taken some Vaseline uh, jelly and uh, rubbed our hands in it because the, uh, the tray material, as you've probably already discovered, uh, has a tendency to, uh, to stick to your hands and it's rather difficult to, uh, to remove. And uh, I prefer to mix the material in a, in a paper cup 
Uh, it gives me a little better access to it and I can wet the powder better with the monomer and using a uh, tongue depressor why we'll add the monomer to the powder and uh, allow it to come to a consistency where we can uh, handle it uh, quite easily and then we'll shape our, uh, our tray. I dispense the monomer into the, into the powder and uh, then mix it to its proper consistency. Our uh, acrylic has reached a, a putty-like like stage and we can uh, manipulate it quite easily with our, our hand. So we like to take it and uh, begin to rough, rough form our tray with it. And at this point in time, it's relatively easy to, uh, to manipulate without a great deal of pressure. And we can move it, uh, move it down to the area that we would like to have it, making sure that we get uh, our flanges down sufficiently so that we won't be short in any particular area. And now we can, uh, we can start to, uh, to form our ridge. And the easiest way to do this is to just take uh, two of our fingers and, uh, and press the material out like so, using, uh, again, the contour, contour of your, your fingers to uh, achieve what you'd like to do as you've uh, done with stones and, and burrs. And uh, this very nicely forms a, a little ridge shape there for you that will allow you to, to grasp the tray in the removal. And obviously there is going to be a certain degree of, of trimming necessary to achieve the final shape you'd like to have. And we can now turn the tray upside down and just put a bit of pressure on it flatten out the, the surface and again go back and uh, continue to, uh, to manipulate it until uh, it gets to the point where it begins to polymerize and uh, we can also use a knife, a lab knife, and trim away some of the skirt while it's in this uh, doughy state and that will save us some some trimming on the, on the lathe after a while. And obviously the, the more trimming that we can do in this stage, why the, the less time is going to be spent subsequently uh, on the uh, lathe with a, a fast cut stone contouring things down. So we'll just uh, continue to, uh, to move around and get, uh, get the flange that's, uh, that's desired here with this type of action with your fingers. And then, as I said, you can take a, take a lab knife if, if you are so inclined and, and trim, trim back some of, of this border so that it uh, requires a little less uh, trimming later on. I like to utilize uh, the bench top to, uh, to give me a nice, uh, nice flat surface here. And this is basically all there is into, in constructing one of these trays. As you can see, it's a relatively simple procedure. Uh, and uh, the end product will uh, at least help considerably in uh, attaining a, uh, a good, a good uh, impression, which will be uh, not only accurate, but uh, also uh, give you something that you can work with uh, quite nicely. Uh, there is one other refinement that uh, can be made to this finished product, uh, going back to it again. Uh, and I call this attention to your attention, not that you would be using it for taking an impression of your cast, but uh, it's uh, one of those little niceties that uh, patients appreciate. Uh, this is called peripheral wax, or sometimes round waxing wax, and it is uh, rather sticky and as you can see uh, quite pliable so that it can be adapted uh, very easily and by just uh, adapting this to the peripheral edge it will do two things that uh, means that you don't have to polish that edge uh, on your uh, 
lathe, uh, and it also uh, is uh, very comfortable in the patient's mouth, and uh, many times will give you uh, a nice uh, roll to the uh, peripheral margin and uh, give you a much uh, more complete uh, impression. So as I said, uh, these are the, uh, the basic things that uh, you want to take into consideration when making these trays. Neatness, uh, cleanliness, the centric stops, and uh, then the, uh, the little hand grip around the outside of the tray to uh, facilitate its removal. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.